Hello, I'm Jennifer Wilcox. I'm the Educational Coordinator at the National Cryptologic Museum at the National Security Agency. Welcome to Revolutionary Secrets, Cryptology in the American Revolution. In a series of episodes, we'll be looking at the different methods used by the Americans and the British to send secret messages during the American Revolutionary War. We'll look at things like invisible ink, difficulties in cryptanalysis, and the first cryptographic methods used by America's first diplomats. But in this, our first episode, we'll be looking at the visual signaling systems created by patriots to aid the cause of independence. The American Revolutionary War opens with a private code. It was a simple system set up by Paul Revere and Colonel Conant in Charleston, Massachusetts, just two days before Revere's famous ride. Revere was a member of a secret society, the Sons of Liberty. They sought to ease and eventually end British rule in the American colonies. Sometimes they pushed their agenda through disobedience, such as the Boston Tea Party. Other times through violence, such as the looting and hanging of the British commissioner who would enforce the reviled Stamp Act. So British authorities tried to contain this rebel group and its activities. One way was to apprehend the leaders of the Sons of Liberty, Samuel Adams and John Hancock. And another way was to confiscate their military supplies, which is exactly what they planned to do on April 18, 1775. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's poem, The Midnight Ride of Paul Revere, memorializes the code that Revere used to signal his compatriots across the river. One if by land, and two if by sea, and I on the opposite shore will be, ready to ride and spread the alarm through every Middlesex village and farm, for the country folk to be up and to arm. The poem, of course, refers to the lanterns hung in the belfry of what is now known as the Old North Church. The lights would indicate how the British were moving to Charleston, whether marching by land down the road or crossing the Charles River by boat. They chose the North Church because it was one of the highest points in Boston at the time and could be seen across the river. Also, the custodian of the church, Robert Newman, was known to Revere as a patriot, and he would have access to the church at any hour. There is a lot of mythology around the Lantern Code and Revere's ride, due in part to Longfellow's poem, which said that Revere awaited the signal on the opposite shore ready to ride and spread the alarm. This was not the case. Revere was in Boston on April 18, 1775, when he received orders to warn the Patriot leaders, Samuel Adams and John Hancock, as well as the militia in Concord, that the British planned to advance to Concord that night over the river. Revere immediately went to Robert Newman and told him to hang two lanterns in the belfry of the church. The lights were meant as a backup plan in case no one could deliver the message in person. However, Revere did manage to row quietly by the British ship HMS Somerset as it prepared to sail with its contingent of troops, and he arrived safely outside Charleston. There, he met up with some local patriots and was assured the lanterns had been seen. Revere then borrowed a horse and made his way to Lexington to warn Adams and Hancock. Another messenger, William Dawes, was also sent to warn them. He rode by land through Boston Neck and arrived in Lexington about 30 minutes after Revere. They were both on their way to Concord to verify that the military stores had been moved and to rouse the Minutemen militia when they met up with a third rider, Samuel Prescott. When the three came across British officers guarding the road, they each went off in different directions. Dawes lost his horse and walked back to Lexington. Revere was captured and interrogated and then finally released. It was Prescott who escaped capture and warned the militia in Concord. It was the early warning of the patriotic rebels, due in part to the Lantern Code, that helped enable a colonial victory at Lexington and Concord. With knowledge that the British regulars were coming, the colonists pulled their militia forces together and successfully engaged the British at the North Bridge in Concord, with the shot heard round the world. The battles of Lexington and Concord may not have resulted in the success the British had hoped for, but it was only the beginning of a war that they had every reason to believe would end favorably. After all, they had the superior numbers, experience, and capabilities. Paul Revere's Lantern Code may be the most famous visual signaling system used in the American Revolution, but it was not the only one. In fact, my favorite was a unique signal system used by a member of the Culper Spy Ring. And that is what we'll be talking about in the second part of our episode on visual signals in the American Revolution. Try this revolutionary activity. Visual signals are used in everyday life as well as to send secret messages during conflicts. Write down as many visual signals as you can think of. Here are a few just to get started. Remember that the signal has to have a meaning. 
Now, challenge your friend to do the same. Who has more? What different methods have you each come up with? Have fun! <laughs>